This is Isaiah 3 and verse 11. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Kal halal Yahweh b'ashem Yahweh shai b'ashem rukwa kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I've called this lesson, The Reward of the Wicked. See this white man, the Edomite, he's red in appearance. He's running out of time. He's surely got to press the button, his wicked and evil plans. Needs to be moved forward. You can see the King, Yahweh Shai, as our Savior and Redeemer, High Priest in the heavens, his Father, Yahweh, meaning he is the existing one. He can see him looming large in the rear view mirror, so to speak, and he needs to get moving quickly. His sword, as his blessing, is violence. He needs to implement it soon so he can move ahead with his dastardly deeds let's get straight back to the scripture here job 27 job 27 13 to about 17 this is the portion of a wicked man with the most high and the in the heritage of oppressors which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment, the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on and the innocent shall divide the silver. See, he buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. What we're speaking about in this lesson is the reward for the wicked. This man is, he's made to do wickedness. And so he's performing his deeds, the, his role in this movie is just to perform one wicked act after another. So he's taking his cue from Satan, Shaitan, what does that mean? That's the adversary. What's he adverse to? He's adverse to wicked, to righteousness. So he's performing his wicked deeds and he's using this Edomite. The, he wants you to call him white. The scripture says you are the Edomite. That's who you are. That's one of the mysteries that's come to fruition in our time. It's not a mystery anymore. We know who you are. It doesn't matter what you causing people to have to withdraw statements. You're bullying everyone. You're running around the earth doing all of your wickedness. And the thing is, people are not afraid anymore. People are speaking out. They've had enough. Micah 2, the start of 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. See, it's never enough. He's got to take everything, and even you, he's got you, I should say, us. Us who? We're the true Hebrew Israelites. They're calling us by bywords of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And the diaspora, the dispersed, we're spread to the four corners of the earth. We are the children of the Most High. Verse 3 of Micah 2. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, against this family, not one man, it's a nation, the 
Edomites calling themselves whites in 1681. It's a social construct. It's a lie. There's no such person in the scripture. He's the Edomite. That's his true nationality. Against this family do I devise an evil, from which ye shall not remove your necks, neither shall ye go heartily, proudly, bouncing around the earth, taking everybody's stuff, saying, this is mine. For this time is evil. In that day shall one take up a parable against you and lament with a doleful lamentation and say, we be utterly spoiled, and he hath changed the portion of my people. How hath he removed it from me, turning away? He hath divided our fields. See, he's a bully. I think we had a few here in the Apocrypha. Let's go to 1 Maccabees. 1 Maccabees 7. Let's read a few verses here. It's instructive what happened in this, these few verses. But Judas pitched in Adassa with 3,000 men, and there he prayed, saying, O Lord, when they that was sent from the king of the Assyrians blasphemed. Thine angel went out and smote a hundred, fourscore, and five thousand of them. It's 185,000 an angel came and smote them. Even so, destroy thou this host before us this day, that the rest may know that he had spoken blasphemy against the sanctuary, and judge thou him according to his wickedness. So the thirteenth day of the month, Adar, the host joined battle, but Nicanor's horse, host was discomfited, and he himself was first slain in the battle. Now when Nicanor's host saw that he was slain, they cast away their weapons and fled. Then they pursued after them a day's journey from Adasa unto Gazira, sounding an alarm after them with their trumpets, whereupon they came forth out of all the towns of Judea round about and close them in so that they, turning back upon them that pursued them, were all slain with the sword and not one of them was left. Afterwards they took the spoils and the prey and smote off Nicanor's head and his right hand, which he stretched out so proudly and brought them away and hung them up toward Jerusalem. For this cause the people rejoiced greatly and they kept that day a day of great gladness. Moreover, they ordained to keep yearly this day, being the 13th of Adar. Thus the land of Judah was in rest a little while. We're talking about the reward of the wicked for all of their wicked deeds. 185,000. One angel came and smote in one day. See, none of these words go void from our Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh. We know the names. We don't mess with those names. We're staying the Apocrypha. Second Esdras 16. And let's start at 47. Second Esdras 16, 47. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery. The more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sin. Who's speaking? It's the Lord, Yahweh. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman, so shall righteousness hate iniquity. When she decketh herself, and shall accuse her to her face, when he cometh, that shall defend him that diligently searcheth out every sin upon the earth. That's what's getting ready to happen. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is there sending his son. Yahweh is sending his son, Yahweh Shai, to destroy this man's kingdom. What man? It's the white man. He's the Edomite. He's the one performing all the wickedness in the earth. And therefore be ye not like thereunto, nor to the rocks thereof. For yet a little while an iniquity, that's multiple sins, shall be taken away out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. Let not the sinner say that he hath not sinned. For the heavenly Father shall burn coals of fire upon his head, which saith before Yahweh power and his glory, I have not sinned. 
Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. There's no hiding place for this man. What man? It's the wicked, the devil that the Bible speaks of. Where next? Just get a few here in Isaiah. Many of these scriptures, they're twofold. They not only speak to the wicked, the devil, the white man, the Edomite, but also those of us Hebrew Israelites who have joined ourselves unto this man. They're calling us bywords of Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Let's go to Isaiah 1. Let's start at 24. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will ease me of mine adversaries and avenge me of mine enemies, and I will turn my hand upon thee and pure, purely purge away thy dross, that is the waste, and take away all thy tin, and I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed, redeemed, remaining back. Deeming is to buy, to buy back with judgment, and her converts. Convert, con means with, and vert means truth, with truth, with righteousness and the destruction of the transgressors and of the sinners shall be together and they that forsake the Lord shall be consumed that's to be destroyed for they shall be ashamed of the oaks which ye have desired and ye shall be confounded for the gardens that ye have chosen let's leave it there in that verse let's go to Numbers 24 let's start at 14 and now behold I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. And he took up this parable and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, had said, and the man whose eyes are open had said, he had said, which heard the words of the Most High and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open, I shall see him but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. This is a word of, of prophecy about our Savior. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab. That's the current people who we know as Chinese and Koreans, and destroy all the children of Sheth. And Edom, the white man, the devil, shall be a possession. Seir, this is weird. He's also known as Seir. It's a place he occupied. Also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Israel shall do valiantly. Verse 19 of Numbers 24. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion. And shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek. This is the chief house of the Edomites. This is the grandson of Esau, Edom. When he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, the first to be in rulership. He was the son that was born first. Remember those twins, Jacob and Esau. But his latter end shall be that he perish forever. What we're speaking about in this lesson, remember the title, is the reward of the wicked. And these Amalekites, they're currently in rulership. They're trying to pretend that they don't own everything, but they're behind the curtain and they're writing all of the checks. The checks to what? To all the madness and wickedness, debauchery and degeneracy that is in the earth. If you want to be a musician, you've got to perform all these acts. Unspeakable acts. So they've got you on camera doing things, compromising you. And you have to do it. And you, it's non-stop. There's some people, they're rappers or something, and you see their 
40, 50 years old, and they're still having to behave as if they're teenagers. You think, well, when it never ends, because there's no stop, this man never has enough, and he uses these people for the whole of their life, and when he has no further use for them, you hear, oh, such and such has taken a, a drug overdose, or he's just died in some accident. They cast you off like nothing. So woe unto all of us who find ourselves trapped with this man, Psalms 21, starting at eight. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies, thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth, and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back. When thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. This is what we're speaking about here. Thine arrows, this is intercontinental ballistic missiles, nuclear war, fervent heat is coming to Babylon the Great, which is America. Let's read that verse again. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength. So will we sing and praise thy power. Let's see, where are we going to go next? That was Numbers, then Psalms, where we often speak about this man and who he is. Let's see with him. Because he is hated. So let's go to Matthew, sorry, Malachi 1 three and four who is speaking about and i hated esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness whereas edom saith we are impoverished but we will return and build the desolate places which they've done on more than one occasion thus saith the lord of hosts they shall build but i will throw down and they shall call them the border of wickedness not one man them it's a, a nation the Edomites, the white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of, and the people whom, against whom the Lord Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh shall have indignation, that's righteous anger forever. We read earlier, he said, he'd take up this parable against Amalek, which is the chief house of these Edomites. See? Let's go back to the Apocrypha. Second Maccabees, one, and start at 24. And the prayer was after this manner, O Lord, Lord, power creator of all things, who art fearful and strong and righteous and merciful, and the only and gracious king, the only giver of all things, the only just, almighty and everlasting, Thou that deliverest Israel from all trouble. See, we are his people, much to the dismay of the others. That's why they hate us. And did choose the fathers and sanctify them. Receive the sacrifice for thy whole people, Israel, and preserve thine own portion and sanctify it. Gather those together that are scattered from us. Deliver them that serve among the heathen. Look upon them that are despised and abhorred. And let the heathen know that thou art the heavenly father. Punish them that oppress us and with pride do us wrong. See, this man takes no account of our labors. You can work for free, he doesn't care. He's had four or five hundred years of free labor with us in captivity. And now he's looking to do it again with his under the skin technology. It's in Revelation 13, 16 and 17. Where were we? Plant thy people again in thy holy place as Moses had spoken. And the priests sung psalms of thanksgiving. We can't wait for this 
madness to be over. Let's just read Psalms 140 to finish. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart continually. Are they gathered together for war? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my power. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. As for the head of those that come past me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. What name is that? It's Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. See, that's what we're looking for, the overthrow. The scripture says the Most High is going to melt this man, that's the, your reward for your wickedness. And Yahweh Shai and the angelic army, they are looming large in the rear view mirror of this wicked man. And so Amalek, the chief house, Esau, Edom, the white man, he got in a trick bag. What's he going to do as soon as he makes the move? to further his kingdom, the Most High is going to trap him, get him into a corner and destroy him utterly, after which he's going to go into slavery for 1,000 years. Just enough of them will be left and we're gonna have them in our kingdom. This master strategist, whose name is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that's the God of Israel. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's in charge. And this so-called white man is soon going to face his maker, ready or not. So don't stretch the lesson beyond where it needs to be. You've been listening to the reward for the wicked. Shalom until the next one.